Hey, wouldn't it be nice to have a beautiful Danish design chair? However, there are also alternative chairs that closely resemble the original and are much cheaper. But are they truly an alternative? No. During my visit to the beautiful island of Odense in Denmark, I had the opportunity to speak with Knut Erik Hansen, CEO of Karl Hansen and Son, about replicas. The Wishbone Chair, designed by Hans J. Wigner, is one of the Danish design classics. But such iconic pieces are often replicated. In this interview, Knut Erik Hansen explains why it's so important to choose the original over the replica. Do you know about the survey that states one of 10 Dens have replicas at home and they expect this number is increased to 19% in the future? What do you think about it? Well, it is uh, sad, of course, because uh, replicas are stolen products. Uh, there are architects that have lived uh, their lives and uh, some of them, uh, many of them, you know, are spending a lot of time getting the ideas, getting things together, learning and all that kind of stuff. And then they produce a, they design a piece, piece of furniture or whatever. And then uh, somebody just copy it. And uh, it can take years and years to get something finished and in order just as they want it together with us. And and for us to, 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 to see that they is just stolen and, and uh, mass-produced at a poor, poor quality. Um, this is hard. But, you know, you have to live with it because it happens so in, in many big places of the world. And I would think that many of these uh, copy uh, factories and, and so on, they're much bigger than us. And, uh, and because they, they push it out and they probably, uh, they are blessed by, by the local governments in, in the areas where they, they produce. And um, so they, they, they gain uh, foreign capital and, and therefore, you know, everything is seen through, that's no problem and it's hard for us. But I also think that uh, there are a number of factor, factors that, that change this, uh, this uh, problem and that is that uh, uh, more and more people are conscious of the quality they are more conscious of the of the material, raw materials that go into producing a piece of wood, uh, a piece of furniture, for instance. Now we talk about furniture. Uh, the wood has been standing in a forest for for the best part of 100, perhaps 200 years to grow up, and you must make something orderly out of it. Uh, if you make something that lasts for five or six, seven, eight years, and then fall apart, and have all the time had a weakness and so on fine, um, uh, you waste a lot of wood, a lot of raw materials that is getting more and more precious. So I think young people today and people with a certain uh, decency, they, they understand and they want to buy high quality, something that lasts. So, so that, is, that is some change in the market which we can feel. And in fact, a very interesting place is in China itself that the, the, the Chinese that have worked hard to get their money, uh, to collect their money and get to the standard they have today, they buy nice flats and they want for all the, the real stuff, the real quality into their home. They don't want rubbish that fall apart and, and that they probably show that they can't afford the real stuff. It, it, of course, the, real, the, the originals are more expensive, but they are certainly also made in a different way and there's a lot of research going into it. They, there are a lot of people involved in it and, and everything is the best. And that, therefore, there is a, there's a vast difference. It is not price, it's quality. We compete on quality, they compete on price. That makes a big, 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 big difference. And, and therefore, that quality, they, they, the, the people, much more people now want that. Uh, environment. Is a, a, is a different story where young people or again lots of people, more and more people think of the environment. That they, the things they buy they want to see that they last. And they, the best thing is that the, the children will be fighting over it when they're not here anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and and because they are also classical, they are they never go. There's no there's no fashion in it. It is it is classical, and uh, and therefore they they love the furniture and they keep on and they get sm nicer and nicer as they they they, they age. And, and, and this is something fantastic. So I am still an optimist and uh, there is a market for us and uh, a growing market and, and this is very positive for us. Danish design is part of the Danish DNA. Some may question why they should pay a lot of money for furniture just because certain brands have the rights to it. What are your thoughts on this cultural aspect? I think you pay very little for the rights. The rights is not expensive part. You pay a, a royalty to the to the architects, but for that, uh, that is not a big, that's not a big part. The big part is the, the, uh, is the, the, the raw materials, it is the labor that goes into making it, it is the investment in the machinery and in, in, in distribution and so on. Uh, But the, the, works, the workmanship, the, 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 the attention to quality is completely different. And that's what you're paying for. It's like buying, it's very easy to, to compare it if you buy a, a, a big, nice, ally, not a big, but a, a nice German car. And you compare that with something that comes out of a, a, a different place. I, I won't compare it. But, but you, you, I think that illustrates that That car has been tested backwards and forwards and everything is perfect and the, the bearings and everything is the highest quality. That makes a difference, but you can possibly, you can't see it, but you know it's there. And it is exactly the same with furniture. If you take a chair from, from, from our place, it's all made of wood. There is no plastic, no artificial stuff into it. If there is any metal, you can see it and it's all stainless steel. No chrome, no, 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 rub, no, no artificial stuff. Nothing that harms the, the, the earth. When we are finished with making the products, there are some bimaterials that is all being reused. For if it's off cut, we try and cut out small ornaments and so on, which we sell in our flagship stores all over the world. Uh, and what is left from there is burned off, it's, it's uh, crushed and sent into big burners and we heat up the factory and we heat up 470 houses around the factory uh, that gets cheap cheap and, and, and efficient uh, heating all year round. So this is something where there's nothing left, there's nothing that is not being used and it's a high respect for the, for the, uh, for the uh, material, the raw materials we use. And all this, uh, of course, uh, I, I'm not saying that this is added onto the product, but it shows you a responsibility towards the architect, towards the product, towards the raw materials, towards the public. And, and this is what you must consider when you, when, you, when you buy things like this, that, you know, that, uh, that furniture, for instance, from our factory, that we are thinking all the way through. But it's not expensive. I mean, if you look at, at, a, at a fake that will last for a limited period and you look at a chair from us that will last for hundreds of years if you want to. I mean, they have, I see in the local hospital here in the city chairs that my father sold in 1958 in the lobby of the hospital. There must be a hundred people every day sitting in it. It's still there with the original leather on. I mean, things like that makes it very inexpensive. <laughs> if you... We, we, if you uh, uh, think of what it cost you every year from 1958 up till today, it's peanuts. So it's not an expensive thing. It is also respect for the people who work here in Denmark in the factory, because you are producing here in Denmark. Wouldn't it be easy for you to move the factory to Asia, for example? That would be very easy for me. It would be very easy for me. And I would be joining the rest of the team. People here in Denmark have been... Uh, making wood work for, since the Viking Age or even before. We have developed a skill in making things out of wood. You know, you have uh, in many other countries, most other countries, you have, uh, you have raw materials that like iron, you have, uh, you have uh, oil, you have, you have a lot of raw materials, which we, we have none. We have nothing. We have chalk. 
and we can't use that for much. Then we have our brains and our hands. And the skills that goes into producing things, for instance, in wood, furniture and things like that, we are experts in. We are by far the best in the world. Uh, we are like the Swiss uh, watchmakers and things like that. We just make furniture instead of. And therefore, that that is uh, that skill is uh, something I I love, and I decided it could be to make my furniture in Denmark. It could be easily made in the Far East. In fact, I have lived 22 years in the Far East. I have nothing against the Far East. I have nothing against the energy and whatever you see out there. But when it comes to skills in making furniture, we are far superior. And 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 I can sit back in my house every night when I go home with good conscience. I make fantastic furniture, and this is something which I love to send out, and which a lot of people all over the world love to buy, and 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 consider that quality something that they really want, and and that's good enough for me. And therefore, I continue to make furniture in Denmark, and we are 680 people employed now in this factory. By the way, I also have a factory in Vietnam. So I'm not I'm not uh, wholly uh, thinking of Denmark. I have also, and here we make furniture uh, for outdoor, made of, of teak, and and again for the environment, it's better to make that in the Far East where you have the wood, and then ship the finished product all over the world. So we we we, we do both. <laughs> Your products have also been copied worldwide. Do you have an idea which product is the most copied? Ah, yeah, yes, of course, it, it must be the wishbone chair. Of course, it is the the best seller we have, um, and we have produced that for the, for since 1950. Uh, and we still produce it, and it's getting more and more popular still. Um, but but most of what we produce is being copied. But the wishbone chair is by far the most. But, but uh, everything we make is being copied, and it's very frustrating, but... It's different people buying it. I can't help it. I, I haven't got the resources to stop it. I can't. Do you have an idea on how many copies are out there? Much more. Yes, because there are lots of people. If you look at the pyramid, there are lots of people uh, at the bottom of the pyramid that wants to buy. They probably like good design and, and they, they also buy, but they buy the wrong stuff. And, and instead of perhaps... Uh, saving a little bit of money and then buying the real stuff because the difference is actually very it's not big what is the difference between a fake share and your original share it's there, there are so many things because a fake share usually is made on a compromise they compete the, the manufacturers of of the fakes they compete on price and they are fiercely in between them competing on price We compete purely on quality. It's like the Swiss watch. I mean, you buy a Rolex or you buy uh, something made out in, uh, in, in China somewhere. There's a huge difference. Yeah, the, the, the Chinese watch will last for a couple of years and you throw it out. Right? The Rolex will last for generations and will become better and at a better and better, better value. So you actually make money on it at the end. Exactly the same happens with our furniture. <coughs> Whatever, if you buy a 40-year-old wishbone chair in the United States at, a, at, a, at, a, uh, at an auction, you get more money, you pay more money for that chair than you buy from a brand new one from the factory that I made today. Because they, they have an, a history, they have a, people think that they are more, more, perhaps more original than what I produce, they are not. But, but that's how it is, and, and I appreciate that, that they increase in value. And so in 40 years' time, whatever I produce today will be sold at a higher value. And they are just as good as uh, what we have today. The la latest we have started is we buy up second-hand furniture, refurbish it, sand it, make, it uh, make a new seat for it, and shield it again. Because there's nothing wrong with it. And why waste it? If people want to get rid of it, sell it back to me, and I make it up and I sell it again. Not at a full price, but, but at a, at a, I, I don't hide away, it is second hand. But what is the difference? Isn't a share made of wood? I mean, wood is wood, isn't it? Ah, but I mean, that's a big difference. I mean, you, you, it's a whole way of constructing and making it and, and drying the wood. 
the whole, the whole, you know, it takes, if you take an oak chair, we dry the wood for more than a year. It costs a lot of money. We cut out, we only take the best pieces. There are no nuts, there are no, no faults in the wood. So there are also things being cut off. That cut off is, of course, used for something. It's being used perhaps for, for, for ornaments or it is heated for heating. But the finished product that comes out of this factory here is perfect. I can guarantee you that. And that is not the case when you, when you are standing there competing on price, because then everything counts and you have no time and no, no, uh, you, you, you don't work towards getting it as perfect as possible, but as cheap as possible. And that's the difference. When it comes to the perspective of an end customer, how can I determine if my product is an original or fake? Most probably uh, there's no label on the, on the fake. There is always a label on the original. And it says, uh, it says our name. And, and of course, uh, there is also a little number, which you probably can't uh, get anything out of it, but we can see that it is made here. But it is also, uh, there are, uh, if you st put an original and a copy next to each other, you can easily see the difference because there are compromises. And, and uh, we go through a lot of agony making things absolutely perfect as the architect designed it. And Wegner was never went on compromised in any way. And if you have to produce it at a cheap price, you have to compromise. And you can see it immediately. And, and, but it's difficult for me to, to sit here and explain it. But if you put two, two chairs, an original and a copy next to it, so you'll be able to see it. You'll also be able to lift it and feel the difference because most probably it's made in a cheap wood and we make it in, in proper oak or beech or proper Danish wood uh, that, that is grown or American walnut and so on and so forth. It is a, up, that's a product that is uh, perfect. But, you know, there are so many different ways of looking at it. But I, the only recommendation I can make is to buy it at a decent place. If you go to lobby market, there is a big, big chance that you get something which is not original. If you go, uh, and, and perhaps here in Denmark it's not too bad because it's our home market. But if you go to, to a foreign uh, lobby market, you will see uh, that there are fakes there. Uh, so if you want to be sure that you get the real stuff, buy it from a, from a decent shop that has an authorization and we can they can show that they are buying directly from Carl Hansen. And if I see a share from you on the internet for 100 euro, what are the chances that it's fake? That, that is 100% a fake. That's how it is. <laughs> you can't get it. What are you doing against these replicas? Can you do anything? Well, here in Europe, of course, a lot has been done. And, uh, and of course, the European manufacturers are, are, are uh, trying to protect themselves best possible. So we, have, uh, we, we join up and, uh, and uh, all of us, whether you're making records or uh, you are a, an artist or you are making furniture or whatever you're making, we all join into one society and, and we fight the copies. Uh, there is also laws uh, passed in the EU now that protect the originals and that means uh, to get fakes into Europe is now uh, illegal and uh, it is also difficult because the customs are aware of, 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 uh, of these copies coming in. It is stolen ware. I mean they steal the design which is protected uh, by law and uh, we pay for, for the protection. Uh, in in uh, that, that we uh, that it is an IP I, I think is an, an intellectual property which you have to uh, respect. So um, uh, uh, in Europe it's quite organized now, but in the rest of the world it is not. Um, so so we, it's completely impossible for us to stop it, and we we we, have, we can't. So we are not big enough. You mentioned the Danish Rights Alliance, where you are part of all Danish design brands. Is there someone working um, there who Googles for fakes and then writes an email? There are lawyers doing that, yes. There are, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, we, we, we tip them, of course, and uh, we, we also pay for it. 
but uh, but uh, we cannot we cannot uh, withstand such a a strong uh, a strong uh, pressure that comes from 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 auto. And I think it goes for everybody. There are fake Rolexes, and and the Rolex are quite aware of that. And they've been sold by the markets in Hong Kong and 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 all over the all over the world in New York and everywhere. They all say Rolex, Rolex. They are not Rolex. We all know that. And that's good fun, but uh, it's not a Rolex. And and when people want a Rolex, they go to a decent shop and buy it. And that goes also for furniture. But how do you reconcile this with the trend that e-commerce is becoming more and more important? Because on the internet, I can't see the product. That's a challenge you, you run. And and uh, and uh, if it is uh, uh, bought at a legitimate shop, which usually sell the original stuff, you you get that on the on the on the on the internet as well, but if you buy from somebody you don't know, well, you're taking a chance, and most probably it is not an original, and you're paying too much. You have we see that time after time that people are asking, uh, say like United States, you ask an architect to to decorate your home, which is quite fantastic and nice, and and, and if you haven't got the time or or the interest, then ask somebody that has and to do it. That's perfect. But if the architect is not honest and buy a fake uh, and charge you the full price, that's dishonesty. And uh, he should be behind bars. I mean, but uh, but it's up to, to, to the people engaging these kind of architects uh, to, to, to make sure that you get the right stuff and the quality is there. And that best thing is turn the piece of furniture around, look at it from the underneath. You can see it immediately. It's a, it's a compromise. It looks terrible. I mean, this is bad for your reputation and bad for the money in the end of the year. But is it perhaps a small honor when your products are copied? When your no. Products are copied? no, definitely not. Definitely not. It's not an honor. I, 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 to... to To, uh, to, to glorify a thief. No, I would never do that. Okay, but what about people who can't afford it but still wish to have Danish design at home? Would you recommend to the, what would you recommend to them? Or is there a plan to make your products more affordable? I think it's affordable. If you, if you look at our accounts and see what is left when uh, we have paid everything, it's not fantastic. No, we don't do it for making us. If I wanted to look at being rich, I didn't do it here. But I'm looking at making the best product, the highest quality, satisfying the market that appreciates this here, that appreciates that we are good to the environment, that do everything we can to make a clean product. If, if people think of that, and they pay perhaps a small premium for that, it is only a small premium, fine, that's good. But If you look at, uh, my accounts are public, and you can go in anytime and see what we make. It's not a lot of money. And uh, I think everybody in the Far East would laugh at us if they knew what we were making and how much agony we go through to make the things. But um, I love it. And um, it's, not for the, it's not for being fast, rich. It is for being one of those that produce the best. And that is satisfactory, my satisfaction. But what about people who just want to spend 100 or 150 euros on one share? Would you say they should buy a replica or another cheaper designer share? I have, you know, if you take if you take a company like IKEA, I don't I don't mind them. I think they waste a lot of uh, raw materials and and so on. I mean, environmentally, we shouldn't discuss it. But I mean, a lot of young people can't afford to buy a Carl Hansen and Son chair. But they would uh, they would buy. A, a cheaper chair till they get the money. But the ambition, the, the urge to get to that time is there. And they learn how to put colors together and match with the curtains and things like that. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. But when they get a little older and they have moved twice and their cupboard is falling apart, which they will, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, they throw them out to the dump and then uh, they go and buy the real stuff, because then they can afford it. And it's not much difference. And if you look at the time span of the product. So you would say sustainability and the product's life circle are increasingly important for more and more people? Getting more and more important for people that can uh, 
understand what we need for the future, for our children, then buy something that will last, of course. And it, it's that the premium is, is not fantastic. You get here in Denmark also manufacturers that are very, very expensive. And I don't appreciate that, I must say. They last, they, 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 they act, they, they, I don't see the reason for it. But they make perhaps a much less uh, volume and they have a niche and that's okay. But they're very expensive. I fully agree there. But we have 680 people working here. We do, it's not mass production, but we have enough people here to make sure that we make the quality which is matching even the, the niche products. But, but it is sent out in the whole world. And that means it is affordable, it is obtainable. And these two things are very important. Do you think there's a change happening right now? Uh, there's a big change. People are getting much, much more uh, conscious of the environment. And this is very important. And very, I, I fully appreciate that. And we're working towards making it as good as possible with the technology you have today.